Hey guys, I'm Frankie. Welcome to the Think Tank. So let's talk about Brian Kohlberger. He has got um, a subpoena out to try and get Bethany Funk to come down and um, basically force her to be there as far as a court appearance when he shows up. I'm just looking. I didn't quite have it set up. I this is my second attempt at this video. Um, yeah, things went a little bit hairy. Let's see here. So there are two more DAs coming in, and it sounds like they've got some great people adding on to uh, the prosecution. So let's see here. Let's check out this one. Actually, a nice day in the Rockies, plus nine. Woohoo! <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. I hope the weather's treating you good. So let's go in here. This is from New York Post. They are in the description. Check them out. So, surviving Idaho roommate Bethany Funk fights something to testify at Brian Cover's trial as part of his defense. That's the part that became a little bit surprising for us all, right? I'm not sure if this is gonna kick in or not. So one of the two housemates who survived the brutal slayings that claimed the lives of four university students in Idaho. We know this case very well by this point. If you don't, I have a full playlist of um, right from the beginning with this case, from anything from paperwork that we've gone over to um, going through the house to there's a lot that to dig into if you're wanting to learn more about this case if you're a little bit behind. So Bethany, who is now 21, filed a motion to dismiss the subpoena from Brian Kohlberger's attorney that were filed in the District Court of Washu County, Nevada, where she's from on Friday, according to court records. Brian Kohlberger's attorney are arguing that her testimony is key to the trial and could clear charges levied against their client. I don't know, because don't we have DNA? I don't know. Bethany Funk has, in, has information material to the charges against Kohlberger. Portions of the information Ms. Funk has exculpatory to the defendant. Attorney Richard Batoni wrote in an affidavit. This is all just new. We were wondering where this girl went right from the get-go. Miss Funk's information is unique to her experience and cannot be provided by other witnesses. What the hell, guys? Funk, who awoke to find, now get this one, find the bodies of her housemates in the upper floor, the next two floors. There was Zana and Ethan on the second floor, and there was Kylie and Matt, Katie and Maddie on the top floor. So they're saying that she discovered on the upper floor that she discovered the bodies. This is the first we've heard about this, isn't it? So in their request to squash the the apina, <laughs> apina, <laughs> the subpoena. Her lawyer said the defendant's claims are without 
support. There is no further information or detail pertaining to the substance of this testimony, its material, the materiality, or the allegedly exculpatory information Miss Funk, or why it would be entertained at a preliminary hearing. Yes, you see, because from what we just learned not long ago, um, the defense doesn't talk during this next appearance. This is basically going to be the state saying what they have for evidence so that they can carry on with the trial. And somewhere in the meantime, the grand jury should be getting together as well. They won't give us any notice. That will just happen. So Funk's attorney also argue that court does not have the authority to summon a Nevada witness to Idaho for a, for a preliminary hearing. And this is what I have heard. Beautiful young girl, youngest in the house. Can you imagine, would you want to go look at this man? Jesus, Lord Murphy. So somewhere else on one of the other channels, I heard now, this is allegedly, I don't know what I think about this information, so I'm just putting it out there. Someone is saying that Bethany seen someone naked go out that basement door. Naked dude. Not like um, Dylan said. Dylan said there was a guy that was dressed in black with a mask on, and all she could see was like these bushy eyebrows. So things have changed. And there's uh, Bethany and Dylan. The only reason I'm being open with this is we all know these kids by now. These face, Their faces and names have not been hidden. So a representative for Funk did the comment on the case. The Washu, uh, whoop, the Washu County Public Defender's Office and lawyers for Kohlberger did not immediately respond to the New York Post's request for a comment. So we know that he is supposed to be in court on the week of June 26th, and it sounds like her subpoena is for the 28th. And that's when he will give us his plea. So they're saying that they don't know what Bethany, Bethany knows, but that they're saying that it could clear Kohlberger as the key suspect. Let me know what you guys think of this because I'm like, what? Truly, what? So we know that she lived on the very first floor like we were just talking and that Dylan was on the second floor with Zana and Ethan and the two other girls, uh, Kaylee, Kylie and uh, Kaylee and Maddie. Holy crap. Um, and uh, let's see here. The person... Funk lived on the first floor, but did not, they're saying right here that Dylan was on the same floor as her, but that's not the way it worked. And that the person who allegedly came face to face with the, with him the night of the attack. So they're saying he came, she seen, she was in this room because that was where Dylan was at one point. So Bethany's over here and She's saying that she's seen someone with no clothes on. Don't forget the stairs are right here. So she's saying she's seen someone with no clothes on just kind of pop out this door. Just psychotic looking, right? Look at that face. No emotion. He's got like fish eyes. Police have not publicly stated where their surviving housemates were in the hours before the deaths but have said the duo got home at 1 a.m. Well, one was supposed to be, I think it was Dylan, was at the same place as uh, Zana and um, Ethan. They were over at his sorority um, having fun over there. And I think that Dylan was dating one of those fellows. So it's saying that Dylan locked herself back in that room and then kind of went to sleep. The women have since gotten, yeah, the matching tattoos, which is sweet. So I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. What do you think about more lawyers for him? To fight him. I think all the help they can get because someone like this should not 
just be uh go away i don't want to see you um he needs to be dealt with so one of the two roommates again who survived the slayings in their house um just off campus bethany funk 21 we know filed in district court in the washu county in nevada so they're saying nevada will not force her to go and then they're saying that moscow will so i don't know how that works out so we know that uh, brian koberger has to enter a plea and again they're saying that his lawyers are saying that bethany funk has information material to the charges against brian koberger and portions of the information Miss Funk is exculpatory to the defendant, according to the affidavit. The affidavit says that Funk was interviewed with police on several occasions and disclosed things that she heard and seen. You see, this is all coming out now. We all wondered where she was, didn't we? Like she was just gone. So saying again, that they are arguing the defense statement claiming that she has exculpatory information and are without support and there's no further information or details pertaining to the substance of the testimony. Attorneys argue that even if Funk has exculpatory information, it should not be presented again at the preliminary hearing. They do not get to talk to her. This is the state saying what they have. The preliminary hearing, which is set to establish probable cause and which is not due to become a mini trial. So a request for comment to Funk's attorney um, was not returned. That's not surprising. So Funk, who lived on the east side on the first floor, told investigators in an unsealed document that on November 13th, the occupant of the King Road residence was home by 2 a.m. and they were asleep by 4. And that Dylan Mortensen, who slept in the south side bedroom, you see this is a little bit off because everything we know puts Dylan on the second floor, no longer on that first floor. But this part is basically what we have heard, that she told the police in an unsealed court document she opened her door for a third time after she heard crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. So that's basically what's happening right now with Brian. You know, what do you guys think? What do you guys, I'm really curious. What do you guys think about this? Do you believe that the DA needed a little bit more help? My personal thought is yes, absolutely. We also know that Brian Koberger has a really good defense team, like $200 an hour defense lawyer. And then everybody that works under her, well, not everybody, but the, um, the word's not, the name's not coming to me. Um, they're $180 an hour. So that's a very, very expensive defense. And I'll be curious to see what they've got to hand out. They're saying that Bethany has other information. I don't know what that information could be, but she has been ghosted for so long that I truly would like to know what she knows of anything. So you guys let me know what you think down below. I'm going to say thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.